Hello and welcome everybody to Advent of Code 2023, day 7. Um, so finally, it seems the pattern has been broken. Uh, the emerging pattern we had of odd days being hard and even days being easy appears to have been broken. We had day 7 today and it was pretty straightforward. Um, it's actually quite a fun one, so uh, let's just jump straight in and uh, talk about uh, what we're doing. So, day 7, camel cards. Uh, so, bah, 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 you've, so in the last uh, race, we won our um, we won run our boat trip, uh, which we're going to get to the desert island. Turns out that this is an airship. Cool. <laughs> um, and so we arrive on the desert island, and there's an elf starts asking us about parts. Um, so basically, something to do with there's the machines that make the sand, and they're broken. Something like that. So the elf is going to bring you to where the the rocks are that they need to make the sand uh, to filter the water to make the snow. So um, she says it's going to be a long time. So you get onto the camel. It's going to be a long enough journey. So in the meantime, uh, she's going to play, going to teach you the game camel cards. So camel cards, it says, is quite like poker. Um, but there's some differences in the rules. So we're given the rules here. Um, so we're told, firstly, we're told what all the cards are. There's A, K, Q, J, T, and then there's the numbers 9 to 2. Um, and that's, that, that indicates their, uh, their relative value or strength. Um, so A being the highest and 2 being the lowest. And then there's the different hands. So this is basically the same as poker. So, well, similar to poker. You can have five of a kind, which is where obviously all five cards you have so the hand contains five cards each card has uh the same value that means it's a five of a kind which is the the best one you can have then you can have four of a kind um so you have only one odd one out you have a full house which is three of a kind and two of a kind you've got three of a kind which is as it sounds three of a kind two pairs so you got two of the same one odd one out and then you've got one pair and then the last, which is the lowest hand, is just a high card hand where there's no matching cards, all unique. And effectively, your score would be, you know, whatever the... In, in a normal game of poker, a high card would just be whatever the most powerful card in the hand is. Rules in this game are slightly different. So, uh, let's have a look. Um, so... Uh, yeah, and, and the, the other case here that they say, which is they call out, is that each category of hand no matter what cards are in that hand, five of any card is always better than four of any card and so on and so forth down the way. So uh, all full houses are stronger than any three of a kind, no matter what the cards making them up are. So you can have weak cards that make them up, but they're still going to be stronger. Uh, what else? Yeah, so that's more or less it. So yeah, then the only other thing then is that if you have two cards that are the same hand, um, then you need to figure out which one is better. So this is basically a tiebreak situation. And in this case, the way they say to do it is they say to start at the very left. Uh, so you look at the leftmost card, so the first card, you compare those two. And depending on their relative strength, that should give you what the... Uh, what what the winning hand is um if those happen to be the same then you move to the next one and if those happen to be the same then you move to the next one if those happen to be the same you move to the next one so on and so forth uh obviously if you get to the last one and they're still both the same then it's the same hand uh and so there they would be a tie i don't know if there's any duplicates in this whole list i didn't actually check that um i don't think there are there might be but i don't think there are um i never checked could be um so yeah so that's it then so this basically just down here they're just giving you the example so this is what our input this is what it looks like so they tell you that this is your uh, hand this is how much is like been bet against that hand and then what they want you to do is they want you to figure out which of these hands is the strongest hand and which is the weakest and order them from strongest to weakest and then your final answer will be that integer rank number multiplied by the 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 amount that was bet or the amount of the bid was so basically you take you take these you order them in the correct way so then effectively you're ordering these in the correct way and then you multiply 
each one by its uh, by its um, rank, and then add them all together, and that gives you your answer. So down here at the end, you see you've got seven six five times one two two zero times two, and then all the way down to the end, and that's yeah, add them all together, and that's that's your answer at the end. So we basically need to do two things. We need to come up with a way of uh, checking the hand of each card. And then we also need to come up with a way of, so if we split them all out, we can split all the hands out and then we know, well, these guys are going to be higher ranked than these guys, than these guys, than these guys, because we know that they're uh, in an order. And then within each hand, we need to be able to split out. We need to be able to sort what's in those hands, um, which is based on the actual cards that make them up. So identify the hands, group them, sort each group, then flatten the whole list out and then add up all or multiply out and add up all the ranks. Okay, so let's do it. Uh, have a look at our code and for part one. Okay, so the first thing that I'm doing is I'm basically making uh, some lookup tables, which is just going to be handy for grouping things or for, for checking things later. Um, let's not worry too much about what's in them just now. I'll come back to exactly how I've set these up. Um, and we'll have a look at that. The only other thing then is, yes, yeah, so this is the main data structure that makes it up. So I've got each type of hand just called out by a, by, um, by a string here so that I can identify them. So effectively, once we've looped through all of the hands, I'll have these all grouped out. Uh, and this will be an array of each hand. Um, so then at the very end, when we want to get our answer, we're going to flatten this out and we'll have, so we'll sort each of these based on that criteria of the cards and then we'll flatten the whole thing out and that's how we'll get our answer. So let's have a look at what we do. Uh, so first thing we do, we start iterating through the file, pull out the hand and the bid. Um, what's that hand mean in this case? Do I use that somewhere? Oh yeah, yeah, sorry, the, so the hand is just the, um, the hand, so, sorry. <laughs> Let me start that again. So we pull out the hand, we pull out the bid. The hand is the actual, the letters that make up what the hand is, and then the bid is the, the integer number, which is like the amount you bet. So we get our two values out here. Um, the first thing we're going to want to do is... Okay, so now I have to now I have to go back up to the lookups at the top again. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to figure out what the score for that hand is. So uh, there's you could probably do some complex sorting algorithms to try and figure out what way the the hands should be sorted, but I identified a slightly easier way to do it. So they tell you that you start from. So if you go back to here, they tell you that the way you look at these is from left to right. So you look at these two numbers, you compare those, see which is bigger. Then you look at these two numbers, compare those, see which is bigger, and so on and so forth. That's basically how you can compare regular numbers, right? Um, you can just do that, like you look at the, you know, the hundreds, then the tens, then the ones, and you can work your way down that way if you want. But we can see up here, we've got more than, uh, more than that amount of we've got more than 10 digits or whatever so if you were to just put them in in places eventually you'll have ones that are too big and they won't line up and the yeah, yeah, won't work out very well so what you can do is so what i did up here is i created this lookup where i convert each of these in order to a hexadecimal basically so what i do is i take all of these in this map and this converts it to what its digit would be in hexadecimal, which, so this is just a different number base system for anyone who doesn't know. So you've got our normal base system is base 10. So we go from zero, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. And then at the nine, we move over one when we get to 10. And now we're looking at the tens and then we're looking at hundreds and then thousands. So in hexadecimal, instead of it being base 10, it's base 16. So you go from zero, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. And then you get a, which represents 10, B, C, D, E, F, and that's the hexadecimal system. So what that lets us do is that lets us model one character to be a number greater than 10, basically, in what we would normally think as numbers systems. So I have all my cards here, and they all represent a hexadecimal digit, 
So what I'm able to do then is down here, basically, I'm able to take my list of digits. I'm able to mm, take get the characters out of them. I'm able to map them to a hexadecimal digit. And then I'm able to join them back together into a string, which is a hexadecimal representation now of what that hand is. And then I'm able to convert it to an integer using the base 16 uh, encoding. So what this method will do is this will take that string representation of a hexadecimal number and it'll turn it into some integer number. And that's it. So that's the score then for that hand. So this will come in important later because if you think about it, when we have to, so what I've done now is effectively I've scored that hand. So now I'll have integer scores that are gonna be very easy to order. So uh, later on when I need to sort the individual hands, I just need to sort on a single number, which is really, really easy to do. Um, so yeah, that's the score part. So that was one little trick. And now if you'd never seen something like hexadecimal before this, I can see how this might tie you up in knots, but I found this just to be a convenient way to think about it. And it worked out quite well uh, in this case. So we have our score now as well. You could score, you could do come up with a score in a lot of different ways. Um, you could come up with any sort of system that would let you to sort them. The other way of doing it would be you'd have to create like some nested loops where you're doing comparisons on each one and then you'd have to check back. But yeah, that's a that's a bit of that. Basically, you'd be implementing from scratch a completely custom sorting algorithm. In this case, I just convert them into an integer and then just use a basic sort function to do it instead. Now, you could say, well, you should implement it, the sort function. I'm like, well, it's built in. It's a one line call. I'm just going to use that. Um, there are cases where sorting it does would demand you to do something a little bit more complicated and write your own sort of sort, but it doesn't really matter. Um, okay, so the next thing I do then is I need to identify what the hands actually are so that I can group them together. So we've come up with our score, which we'll use later for sorting, but now we need to identify what the hands are. So to identify the hands, I came up with this other lookup method to do that. So effectively, what's interesting about a hand is you don't actually care what's in it. It's more just the pattern that makes it up. So all you're trying to do is you're just trying to see what groups together to make what. Um, so what I've done is I've basically written this line of code here, which in Ruby land, this thing will take the hand, split it out into its characters, and then it'll group all of the common cards together um, by themselves. So what that will do is that'll give you a result. So if we had the if we had the uh, the the hand that was like uh, A A and then B B B, so that would be a full house of A's and B's. What that will return me, this call will return, is it'll return a data structure which is like A and then A A in an array and then it'll return B and then B, B, B in an array. So that'll give me, that'll tell me that I've got a data structure that has two A's and two B's and that's all it'll give me. So that's all the information you need to form what a hand is. And in fact, all you need out of that is the counts of each of those things. So to know that it's a full house, I just need to know that I have two of one card and three of the other. So I just take those values out and I can um, take those values out and I'll just get the counts of each of them. Uh, and that's what I do here. So that gives me this thing here where I've got a count of those things, which will give me two and three. And then what I do is I encode that into a string. So I sort it and I join it together. And so that will give me a string, which will be like two, three. So all full houses, when they pass through this process, will always give a, a code out of it that's two, three, and that's it. So when we scroll up then here, this hand lookup, should make a little bit more sense. So here's our full house that has this code two, three. Then we've got say five of a kind, we'll always give you the code five, one, four, one, one, three. And then you got, you know, for three of a kind and then for two pair, one, two, two, so on and so forth. Um, and so those, those codes are always gonna be the same. And because they're sorted, they'll always give me that representation as well. So that gives us then this lookup checks that code that we generated and just returns this string, which matches these groups. And so at the very end, I can insert into my groups with that string, 
I've got the hand, which is just like store the raw hand. I've got the bid value and I've got the score stored in there as well. And that's it really. That's like, that's actually the bones of all the logic. Once you've parsed through the file and assembled that data structure, you then have all the information you need to complete the problem. So at the very end here, I just need to do a very simple thing where I go through all of those groups for each group. Uh, I sort the, uh, the hands based on that score. Uh, I have to reverse it just to get the ordering right. And then I use a map function just to pull out the bid value. So now I have an array that is just the bids numbers and they're all in the correct order. Um, so I stick them, so for each group, I stick them into uh, an array, another array. So now we just have a nested array. And then at the very end, all I need to do to calculate my score is I just flatten that array down, then loop through the whole array, and then take each bid, multiply it by its rank in the array, the whole way down, add them all together, and that's it. That's the answer. Now, as I talk through that, I don't know, is that the most straightforward way of doing this? It seems straightforward to me. It's very fast anyway. Um, maybe it's a little bit convoluted. Maybe there's a few mental leaps in here that aren't the simplest to make, but the actual, if you read the actual code itself that's doing the work, it's only, you know, le less than 20 lines here. All this stuff up here is all just these lookup tables, which just make the whole process a little bit um, simpler. Um, but that said, let's run the code and see. 7-1 sample. So it runs, yep, that runs extremely fast. And then if I run it on my input, yeah, it's also very, very, very quick. Um, seven milliseconds, that's that's pretty fast for that. So that's cool. <laughs> um, right, so let's have a look at uh, part two. So for part two, they really didn't change very much in the code. Um, there's a couple of little tweaks that I had to make to my code and there's one edge case that I had to handle. And aside from that, the pretty much the exact code just works as it is. So let's go have a look at what we have to do for part two. So for part two, yeah. So for part two, they introduced the Joker into the into the deck as well. So uh, previously, we did have the J card in here. So up at the very top here, the J card was so it's A Q A K Q J. So J previously, if we look at the code had a value of a, which is effectively 10 in um, in hexadecimal. So they've changed this now and they're saying that the J card is actually a special card and that the J card <clears throat> can now change itself to make that, so it's a wild card now. So it can change itself to make that hand whatever the highest possible hand it could be is. So effectively it can take on the appearance of any card in the hand to try and make the hand more powerful. Um, it says there can be multiples in a in a hand and that if there's multiples in a hand, they'll both, basically they'll both convert to the same, um, to the same value to make the more powerful hand. Um, what else does it say? Oh yeah, and then the other change is that the actual um, strength value of J has now been changed. So the J is now the single weakest card in the deck. So previously we said that we had like A, K, Q, J. So J was to represent like a value of 10. Now it doesn't, now it represents one basically. So it's been put all the way down to the end. The rest of them are all the same, just uh, incrementing in value from there. So yeah, with that in mind, We've got basically a case now where we loop through, we have to loop through the same input that we had, except now when we encounter, so if we encounter a hand that doesn't have a J in it, we just do the exact same logic as before. But when we encounter a hand that does have a J in it, we basically need to transform it in some way to identify that it's going to be a higher uh, hand value. The key here though is that it only affects where it ranks in terms of what the hand is the score of it is the same. So it doesn't change. So the J, so we count it exactly as it looks when we go to like score it. So when we're sorting it, but um, for the purposes of what hand it makes, we move it into a different group. So that's effectively all that's changing. Right, so let's have a look at the code then to do that. So first thing off the top, 
<clears throat> we've changed uh, the card values here. So we just altered this map. So we move J from here down to here, give it a value of one. And then everything else just goes up the same values as it used to be. Well, uh, moved uh, offset by one now. Then we've got our hand lookup. That's the same. But I've added a new lookup. So effectively, this new lookup is where all of the logic is now. So this is what uh, figures out the transform of what it could be if it had a joker in it. And yeah, so this is the whole thing. Um, so we can go through this because this is basically where all the logic is. <laughs> um, so if we have five of something, it's the same. It's going to be five of a kind. If you have a hand of five jokers, doesn't matter. It's still five of a kind. Um, if you have four of a kind, which is one and four, if the one is a joker, then it transforms to be whatever this hand is, which becomes five of a kind. If you have four jokers and one of something, that becomes five of a kind. Then if you have a full house, you can, you can either have two jokers or you could have three jokers. In either case, that becomes five of a kind. If you have three of a kind, you can either have one joker, one joker, or three jokers. And no matter what happens here, you're also going to get four of a kind. Uh, I'm going to skip this one for a sec. Uh, if you've got uh, a pair, that can only ever become three of a kind because you can have one, one, or one, or two. If you've got two, it'll match to any of those. If you have one uh, joker, it'll become whatever the two is and it'll make three of a kind. And then if you have a high card hand, that can just make a pair. So I'll come back to the case <coughs> here of two of a kind because this is the only edge case I think that there is. So for the two of a kind case, if you have one uh, joker, it will transform into either of these and whichever it transforms into, it'll make uh, a um, it'll make a full house. But you can have another case with a two pair where it has two jokers. And if it has two jokers, it instead will transform into four of a kind. Excuse me. <clears throat> so in the case where it transfers into four of a kind, I need to be able to distinguish between these two cases. It's the only edge case, so I didn't want to do anything smart here. I wrote it without this edge case originally because I didn't notice it at first, but it's actually in the example. So when I ran it, I got the wrong answer for my sample. And I was like, okay, that makes sense because there is actually this edge case. But it's the only one I could spot. So I was like, ah, I'm not going to go off and try and figure out a more elegant solution. I'm just going to hack it in here so that I just change the lookup value and then I'll just edit the lookup value that I pass in down the code later on, um, which I can show you is down here. So the only, so yeah, so aside from that little hacky change, the only other change to the code down here is that I need to look up if a hand includes a J now. So if any hand includes a J, I, I use the Joker hand lookup. If it doesn't include a J, I just use the normal hand lookup, same as before. But then if it does include a J, then I added an extra check here to say, well, how many J's are there? Are there two J's? And if there's two J's, is, it, is the original hand a two pair hand? If so, <laughs> then I append this J onto the end of it, which then uh, will hit in my uh, Joker hand lookup up here. And that's it. That's the only edge case that I had to fix for it. Um, so this isn't the most elegant thing now in the world. It's a little bit convoluted just because that one little edge case, which is annoying. Um, sure, there's probably a, a more complete way of doing this that doesn't have some janky code to check that edge case. But I mean, if it's only one edge case, I'm fine with it. <laughs> and yeah. That's that's it. That's uh, that's the whole thing, and all the logic down here is all the exact same. Nothing changes to in computing the scores. Nothing changes because we're explicitly told that when you're computing scores, the J card still just represents like one, which is whatever its value in the original lookup was. It doesn't it doesn't take on the value of the card that it's mimicking or whatever. So, um, so with that in mind, let's run this code, and you'll see uh, it's basically the exact same kind of run times. There's no no real difference. Um, and it's still incredibly fast. There we go. So yeah, that is that is the day done. Um, I, I was pretty pleased with this one. I thought it was one of these questions where I was able to arrive at a solution quite quickly. My kind of initial instinct as to how to solve it 
was what worked out pretty well um there was just a little bit of time at the start in like setting up these lookups and really the logic was like thinking through these patterns was really where the 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 kind of the the effort came in and just making sure those were right um the little mental leap to using uh hex to represent the, the values for the sorting is just made something easier later on and then the actual code itself the like two loops you could probably compress this down probably make it a, a bit uh, quicker as well um but yeah as it is it's 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 very fast so i'm quite happy with that um yeah so that was an enjoyable one um day seven done finally broke that pattern of odd evens so maybe they're gonna mix it up maybe tomorrow's gonna be horrible and uh, we never know but it's still early days it's still just past week one so maybe tomorrow won't be too bad anyway um judging by the previous sort of ramping difficulty levels tomorrow should be sort of okay i think still um so yeah fingers crossed they don't throw something horrible at us um yeah so that's it for now um thanks for watching guys and i'll see you all tomorrow